Welcome to Empower Humanity, where we empower humanity through education and inspiration. My name is Amy Kardashian, not Kardashian. Today we have a great subject. We are going to talk why we need to have an open mind for the 21st century. And I have a great guest with me. Are you ready? Okay, let's do it. Welcome to the Empowering Humanity Show with Amy Kardashian where you can find inspiration, education, healing, peace, and hope. Today's guest, George Chanos, former Attorney General of Nevada, international keynote speaker, chairman of the board of Capriati's for over 10 years, and the author of Millennial Samurai. And now, let's welcome Amy and her guest. Nice. Well, welcome to the show, George. Thank you for having me. It's nice to have you. It is a pleasure to have you. And um, as we introduce you, you were the former Attorney General of Nevada. Yes. And you also done a lot of things to serve humanity, and that's why you're with us today. And I love the subject, what we're going to talk about, because it's very important to prepare uh, the generation and even us to prepare, because every day we're just moving so fast yes. and we can't keep up with everything. So I thought this subject is just beautiful subject. And um, as you know, when I read your book with my husband, we just loved your book. You. And uh, we were so uh, amazed because it was so inspiration and has direction and uh, that's why I wanted to have you here. No, well, I appreciate so, it. <laughs> yes, sure. And um, let's talk about a little bit what else do you do now and then we'll go into the book. How's that sound? Okay, sure. So I've practiced law for 30 years and um, have been essentially solving complex problems for people that have come in and had problems with their lives or their businesses or their um, uh, whatever it is that they were doing that they felt they needed legal advice. And um, so I've had, I've spent probably 60,000 hours solving complex problems. And in, um, and what else am I doing? Um, I'm chairman of Capriati's, so we have uh, over 110 stores in 20 states. And we have uh, over 120 people that have signed up as franchisees to open up new stores. By the end of the year, we'll probably have 250 in the pipeline. Wow. So we're now in 20 states, and uh, that is one of the fastest growing QSR franchises in the country. So I'm doing that. And, um, and, but I'm not really involved in day-to-day. -day. I'm the chairman of the board, so I, I uh, do big picture consulting, mm -hmm. so strategic guidance for the company. Um, if there are major issues that the company runs into yes, and they certainly. need some guidance and, and advice, yeah. then I get a phone call. But it's still you're busy. I mean, yeah. knowing that you're busy, uh, what, what inspired you to write this book? So in 2012, I had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And at the time, my daughter was 16 years old. And it occurred to me that the heart attack was unexpected and that it could happen again. And I'm accustomed to spotting red flags. My business has been to spot red flags and to try to look beyond the horizon. And so when that happened, it was clearly a red flag. And my concern was that if I died, what would happen to my daughter and my nephews and nieces? And um, so I sat down and uh, put my affairs in order, got my trust attorney on the phone and put my financial affairs in order. And then the after I did that, I realized, well, I'm leaving all this money to a 16-year-old, and um, she's not necessarily oh, she's gonna guide yeah, it. she's not necessarily going to know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then I also thought that you know she would probably have questions as she was growing older, and uh, her father might not be there to answer those questions. So, I thought, well, why don't I try to anticipate the questions in advance and write the answers, and I'll leave her a letter and the letter will, will answer the questions that I think she might have asked. Yeah. And as I did that, I spent a few months on my laptop and I had over 100 pages and I realized that this is not a letter anymore, this is becoming a book. And I thought, you know what, I'll leave her a book. And the book could have application to other young people that are similarly situated, that have similar questions. That became my first book, and that was called Seize Your Destiny, mm -hmm. right? A, a Roadmap to Success. And that's available on Amazon. It's about $10. It's a wonderful book. It's, uh, 
It's great for anybody ages 8 to 18 primarily, but it can have application to anyone's life. And if you're in the middle of a, of a life change or a career change, it's a great resource for you to look at as well. I interviewed you about that book. Yes. And I was so fascinated because most people, they think they need to leave money yeah. to their children, yeah. but not a wisdom. Yeah. And that was, it meant a lot to me because you could leave money and then they end up spending all the money and then what? Right. The wisdom stays with them, right. you know, forever. And that's more valuable than money, I believe. Right. And that's why I respected that. I respected that you respect, you want to leave something more valuable than money can buy. Right. So the first book was downloading my knowledge over the prior 30 years. What had I learned in my life experience that had allowed me to achieve whatever level of success I achieved? and how could I download that for my family? And that was the first book. And then what I realized was that when I succeeded in doing that, I realized, okay, I've told you about my life over the last 30 years, mm -hmm. but now as I think about the next 30 years, I realize that they're going to be very different than the 30 years that I lived through. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to need a different set of instructions for the next 30 years because times are changing, right? Fast. So very fast. So I then trained my focus on the next 30 years. And what I saw was absolutely incredible. Incredible to me, and I'm sure it would be incredible to everyone else. And so I began- It is incredible to everybody else. Yeah. It wasn't, and then what I liked about the book is you could read only, for example, we would talk about hope, right? Yeah. You have only two pages yeah. or three pages maximum. Yeah. So people are not bored reading about a specific topic. Yeah. It's very short. The book is big, but it's very short. Yes. So it's amazing. Yeah. So You're getting to the point right away. Right. So, so what do you do to prepare somebody for the 21st century, yeah. right? Well, if I were to drop you off in the Amazon rainforest and I were going to try to give you a duffel bag for your survival, right? We can all think of certain things that I would put in that duffel bag, right? I'd put water, I'd put a compass, I'd put a knife, I might put a saw. There are all sorts of things that would come to mind that would go into that duffel bag, mm -hmm. right? Well, I tried to design Millennial Samurai as that survival kit, as that duffel bag for the 21st century. Mm -hmm. so, so today, if, if I were to encounter a young person or somebody that needed guidance and advice for the, tw for the next 30 years, I would say, here, here's, here's your duffel bag, right? You put it here, yeah. actually, yeah. And I, I would give this them- This is an amazing book. I would give them a copy of Millennial Samurai. Sure. And what's amazing about um, the way that the, that the book is done is that, as, as you pointed out, that's probably not gonna yeah. stay. We'll just set it down. Okay. But um, anyway, the, the thing that, that, that I tried to do with the book was, you're right, it is big. It's 444 pages, right? So Full of wisdom, though. <laughs> right, but, but that's a lot for somebody to read, mm -hmm. and not everybody likes to read today, right? We're used to getting our information very quickly, Fast. right? And we've, we've become less patient, mm -hmm. and we've got an overload of information, and we're trying to find breakthrough knowledge in a sea of distraction, in a sea of information, right? So how do we find breakthrough knowledge in a sea of distraction, in an overload of information? So what I did was, I first identified all the topics that I wanted to talk about. And there turned out to be 182 of them that went into the first book, into, into Millennial Samurai, mm -hmm. right? And it says book one, and there will be a book two and possibly a book three. And as I encounter more topics that I wanna talk about as, as life you progresses, add I'll add them to book two and book three. But the 182 chapters are essentially that duffel bag, that survival kit, and they are broken down into one to three pages each. So they're very easy to read, mm -hmm. and they're like Lay's potato chips. When you read one, you're gonna get something out of that one to three pages, and you're gonna get enough out of that one to three pages that you're gonna wanna go on to the next chapter. And that's gonna continue throughout the 182 chapters. So as you get further along the book, it only gets better. And, and you, it will continue to drive you through the process of, of reading these chapters. and and because of the design, because of the short chapter design, you can pick it up when you have 10 minutes, when you have 20 minutes, when you're just sitting around, you know, you've got a few minutes to spare. You, can, you don't have to read it from beginning to end. You could start anywhere in the, in the book. Because you could, it's different subjects. You can open yeah. up to any chapter and, uh, and educate yourself about that chapter. And then at the back of the book are resources 
that are about each of the chapters. So if you want to read one to three pages about artificial intelligence or blockchain technology or advances in genomics or 3D printing or cloud computing or character, courage, commitment or compassion or collaboration or curiosity or creativity, whatever the Everything issue is, in this book. You, can, you can not only read that one to three pages, but then at the back of the book are five to 10 links that allow you to dig deeper. So if you want to go deeper into blockchain technology, you the, the, a, the it, things that yeah. you need to read to become even more knowledgeable are at the back of the book. Okay, so what, what can we share today okay. with our audience about it, to prepare ourselves? Okay. What is, is the most important that we need to know right now? Right, well, okay, so Sheryl Sandberg of, of Facebook, uh, who is the COO of Facebook, said that you cannot change that which you are unaware of, but once you become aware, you cannot help but change. So creating awareness is very important, right? So the first thing that I'd like to do is create some awareness about where we are in society and, and what's coming, right? What I saw when I started to look at the next 30 years, because if I were to ask you what's going on in the back of the room, you couldn't tell me. No one in the audience could tell me what's happening in the back of the room because they're not looking at it, mm -hmm. right? So how can you tell me what's going to happen over the next 30 years unless you're looking at it, right? So I was looking at it, and I was looking at it from the perspective of a trained lawyer who's been researching topics for 30 years, who's a complex problem solver, um, and you know, who's worked at a pretty high level in mm -hmm. these areas, right? And so I took a look at the next 30 years, and for the last, really the last five years, I've been reading voraciously about what's coming. So let me tell you what's coming. Okay, that's okay. what I'm waiting for. Okay, so in 2014, Stephen Hawking, theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, mm -hmm. said that the, that the singularity, what they call the singularity, mm -hmm. will be the greatest event in human history. Greater than fire, greater than the wheel, greater than the internet, greater than space travel, greater than anything that human beings have ever conceived of, right? What is the singularity? The singularity is that moment in time when machine intelligence will eclipse human intelligence, when machines will become smarter than humans, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's, that does not exist today, right? But Ray Kurzweil, the head of artificial intelligence for Google, the man who Bill Gates says knows more about artificial intelligence than anyone he knows, Kurzweil tells us that that can happen as early as 2029. That's pretty fast. That's 10 years away. Yeah. Now when I started reading about this, mm -hmm. Kurzweil's prediction was 2045. So in the last five years, he's gone from 2045 to 2029. So his information, he's at the cutting edge of what's happening, right? So what that's telling us is that the greatest event in human history is going to happen possibly as soon as 10 years from now, right? So what kind of changes? So we're witnessing something amazing. Something that, that never has happened yeah. before yeah. In, in the human experience. Yeah. Now what Kurzweil goes on to say that's even more fascinating is he says that by the 2040s, which is only 20 to 30 years away, depending on if you're at the beginning of the 2040s or at the end of the 2040s, right? In the 2040s, Kurzweil predicts that artificial intelligence will not be our equal. It will be a billion times, a billion times more capable than human intelligence. Now that's 20 to 30 years away. Mm -hmm. Now to put that in perspective, if, if we took your dog and we multiplied your dog's intelligence by let's say a thousand, your dog would probably be walking you. Wow. Okay. So, so to, to have something that is a billion times more capable than human intelligence is a level of intelligence that, that we don't even have the ability to fully comprehend, right? So our intelligence limit, limits us in what we can understand or imagine or comprehend. This level of intelligence is beyond our ability to comprehend. But what we do know is we do know that it's going to create massive disruption. Right? So some people get afraid of this and some people, you know, are... Uh, uh, Wall coming in? Yeah, some people uh, overreact to crisis and, you know, the coronavirus, for example. Mm -hmm. People get very excited and they get overexcited when they hear something like this. They may get overexcited. Um, you, need to, you need to look at the... It, it, you need to understand that mindset 
is a huge part of how you either succeed or fail in life, right? And you want the right mindset. And the right mindset is not apprehension and fearfulness and dread. The right mindset is optimism and belief in yourself and belief in our future and belief in others and, and having the kind of mindset that allows you to avail yourself of the incredible opportunities that are going to come from all of this. Kurzweil says that in 30 years, in 30 years when it's a billion times more capable than human intelligence, that we will have nanobots pulsing through our bloodstream, curing all of our diseases, wow. right? So that's nothing to be afraid of. That's actually a pretty good thing, right? Sure. He, if he, sorry to cut you, but if he says uh, in uh, 30 years from now, yeah. maybe 10 years from now wouldn't be 30 years anymore. Yeah. Then it's going to be faster, right? Yeah, well. Because that, yeah, that's yeah. what happened. Yeah, so we don't know exactly we, what. We're saying 30 years yes, now, yes. just like what they were saying. Exactly. It's going to be When he said 40, 2045, yeah, and then he said 2029. Happen, it happened 30 20 years from now could actually accelerate, accelerate to 20 to years 20 from now, years or from 15 now. years so, from now. Exactly. Yeah. So all bets are sort of off in terms of how quickly this is going to come. Yeah. What we do know is that it's going to come, right? So it really doesn't matter whether the singularity happens in 10 years or 20 years. But it will affect us, this generation. Oh, it will affect everyone in this room. Not just only my grandkids or my it, your, our children. It will affect everyone. So in we the, need to be prepared yes. even in, in yes. when you're in the 50s. Yes, it'll affect everyone in this room. We, will, mm -hmm. we are living in the most extraordinary period in human history. That's the important thing to yeah. take away. We are literally living in the most extraordinary period Witnessing in human history. So contra yeah. congratulations, yeah. right, to all of us <laughs> that we are that we are blessed yeah. to be living in stu in such an extraordinary period of it's time. It's like somebody uh, was living when they built the the, uh, the Egypt the yeah the pyramids the pyramids yeah. right yeah they were in that time. We are in a time right now that we're having a huge shift. Right. So Kurzweil goes on to say, he talks about nanobots pulsing through our blood bloodstream. He talks about our neural cortex mm -hmm. being connected to the cloud, right? Today, you all have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. Today, your cell phone has 100,000 times the computing power that NASA had in 1969 when they put a man on the, room, on the moon. And they needed a room this big to contain all of the computers that had the power to put the man on the moon, right? And now I'm carrying around in my pocket a computer that has 100,000 times what they had Bad. in 1969, right? Now, if, I, if we went back 50 years 50 to 1969 years. Mm -hmm. and I were sitting with a group, that group of NASA scientists and I were telling all of them, you know, guys, in 50 years, every person on the planet will be carrying around 100,000 times the computing power that's in this room, they would have said you've lost your mind. Right? That's not going to happen. Absolutely. Right? So the level of change that we've already experienced is, is, is really would have been incomprehensible 50 years ago. Right? So when we're talking about this future change, someone once said if someone is talking about the future and it doesn't sound like science fiction, they don't know what they're talking about. Right? So some of this may sound like science fiction, but it should because that's the kind of life that we're, that, that is, that we're coming into, right? He talks about our neural cortex being connected to the cloud. So today you look on your phone. When I was a young man, I had to go to the library to look something up. Today, my nephews and nieces that are here, they just go on their phone and they can look it up on Google. Tomorrow, in 20 to 30 years, they won't have to go to their phone. They will just think of a question and their neural cortex will be connected to the cloud and the answer will come to them instantaneously. Wow. Right? That's so, kind of scary yeah, a little bit, yeah. right? Well, it, it gets even more interesting. Yeah. Kurzweil talks about our neural cortex being mm -hmm. connected to a hive mentality, meaning that all of our knowledge will be uploaded to the cloud and that I'll know everything that you know and you'll know everything that I know and I'll know everything that everyone in the room knows and everyone in the room will know what I know. So we already have all this technology. It's already yes. there. There, yes. is a, there is a consciousness or our thoughts. It's, it's around us. It's bigger than just our brain. Yes. We know that. So, but now we're getting to know how to tap into it. Yes. So we're getting exposed to that yes. more. Yes. So we've learned more about the human brain mm -hmm. in the last five years than in the last 5,000 years. And so that's also a very important point, is that um, scientists are now able to track, for example, they can put you under an MRI-type device, 
and they can give you math problems. And while you're computing those math problems in your brain, they're filming it and they're watching it. They can prick your toe and, and the pain center in your brain that is activated, they can see. So they can map all of our neural pathways. And um, actually a company um, um, already uh, did what they call a connectome, which is reproducing the brain of a pig, right? And so these things have not been done with humans yet, but they're, they're getting to the point where advances in science, um, and it's not just artificial intelligence. There are other advances in genomics, for example. Um, and again, you know, it's, it's not worth quarreling over whether or not these things are going to happen in 10 years or 20 years or 30 Doesn't years, matter. because that's happen. kind of irrelevant. It's gonna yeah. happen. It's coming, and it's coming within our lifetime, right? So there are some scientists in Japan who have taken a skin sample from a mouse, right, from the tail of a mouse, and they have created a gamete, a, a, a sperm and an egg, from that single skin sample and that single set of genetic information from a female mouse. No male mouse involved. They created a gamete of a sperm and an egg from that skin sample, and then they created eight pups, eight mice, from that skin sample that have the same DNA of, as the mother donor of the skin sample, right? So, and the scientists that are doing this are quoted as saying that it would be naive to think that we will not be able to do this with humans, okay? So they've reproduced without a male and female interacting. And they're saying that this would be inconceivable, that it will not be possible with humans, right? Which means that you could take a skin sample from two men and create a child, or from two women and create a child, wow or from multiple donors and create a child, and it would have their DNA. So there are all sorts of moral and ethical uh, issues that, that we're going to have that. to grapple with. Um, you know, what will this do to the world's religions? What will this do to um, our you know, beliefs that go back to the dawn of time, right? Um, how will this upset and, and change the societies that we live in? Governments will change, political parties will change, political structures will change, employment will radically change. Um, automation. Right now, um, McKinsey and Company says that 47% of all jobs are currently susceptible to becoming automation uh, run by ro robots um, with existing technology. So what's going to happen to our the next generation? We could probably pass sure. that uh, 10 years, 20 years before we get to that yeah. point. Yeah. This is why you're scared to, you want to teach the next generation to prepare them what they need to know, I yeah. mean, which kind of skills they need to have. Yeah, so first thing, I'm not scared about okay. anything. Good. I'm not. I, I'm, my, my, my wife once said uh, that my daughter, when she was a baby, was the only thing I was scared of. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Mm -hmm. I'm actually embracing it, right? So, so it may sound scary, but there are incredible opportunities that this will create for all of us, right? So new jobs will be created. One of the things that, that concerns me is that we're not training people Prepared. for we're these new jobs. We're mm -hmm. not training people mm -hmm. to pivot and adapt to a changing environment. Does your book talk about that? Yes, absolutely. So, See, so, I mean, if, if, yeah. if the book talks about that, they, they need to get the book. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I, I know it does, but I just want to make sure yes. we emphasize that. Yes. Because you're not there all the time, but the book, they can pick it up and read it and really get educated. And if they need more, they, they can, can dig get deeper. Dig yes. deeper. Yes. So that's like a amazing map yes. it's for people to share with their children. Exactly. So it's it, the, it goes back to Sandberg's quote about creating awareness, right? If you become aware, you cannot help but change, right? So first of all, letting people know, creating awareness, right? The other thing is... Um, we are, we are a very divided society right now, right? We are more divided. Uh, researchers have gone back 160 years, have had to go, go back 160 years to the Civil War, to, to, to 1860, to, to find a period of time in our history where America has been more divided. My goodness, if we're gonna have to talk, this is amazing that we need to have several segments yes. to really yeah, we're get into all this beautiful information yes. that you're giving us and the knowledge you collected. I, I appreciate you so much for doing this because 
Uh, we need someone who has this information to bring it to the table and show us all that. Right, and since, so we, that's very and important. since we may run out of time since we're limited, yes. let me kind of bring this together sure. to where it needs to be. So, so the first thing is we have to have awareness, right? We need to know what's coming. Right, because that awareness of what's coming should motivate us, right? Should motivate us to take action, right? And then the question is, what action do we need to take, right? So um, the fact that we have division, it should be very obvious to all of us that division doesn't help anybody, right? That a house united, uh, divided cannot stand, right? So we need to come together, right? So how do we come together? Because sometimes when we're talking to people who have very different beliefs than we do, it's hard, it's very hard to you know, tolerate the beliefs that we feel are maybe dangerous or, or bad for society, right? How can we appreciate that belief? So part of the awareness that you need to have is you need to know that, that your brain is, is, we all have similar hardware. Do yeah. I have enough time to go into this? We have less than half, half a minute. Oh, really? <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, okay, that's so, okay. So, so that's what, what I'm need, saying. Then, then is, what you need to do <laughs> is you need to read yeah. this book. You yeah, need to read, exactly. You need to read you Millennial need to Samurai. Re absolutely. Because essentially, essentially, if you open have, your mind, mm -hmm. if you open your mind to yes. other information, that's your parachute. Uh, yes. an, a, a mind doesn't work if it isn't open. If you open your mind, then you will receive information that you need to survive and thrive in the 21st century. And it will be a glorious period. And it can be a second enlightenment. And it can be the Absolutely. greatest time in human history if we make it that, right? But we have to make it that, right? So Millennial Samurai will show you how sure, to make it that. And then you can teach others and you can pass it on to your children and to other people that you run into. It's a step-by-step -step guidebook on Very how to necessary. think and how to act and how to make the most of, of your one and only life. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time to come in and um, not just reading the book, going out and talking about it to thousands of people. Yeah. I know that. And uh, continue. And this is like a new journey for you. You live. This is your purpose, yes. I feel. Yeah. And I appreciate to share that purpose with our audience and educate us. Thank you. Beautifully, beautifully Thank you. to put. It's amazing. I um, want to have you again on my show. So we're going to continue Anytime. having you because Anytime. we can't have enough from this information. We need it des desperately well, thank right you. now. So thank, thank you. you. And uh, for all of you, if you uh, would like to know more about George and then also his book, please pick it up. I highly, highly recommend it because it's good not just for our children, for us as well, because we all can learn something from it and we want to pass it on um, as a gift to, our gener to the next generation, just like George is doing. So again, thank you so thank much. You. And thank you for the audience for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> See you next time. If you would like to be part of the studio audience or would like to be involved, please visit EmpoweringHumanityTV.com. Sponsored by The Negotiator Mind. Shifts your perspective on life. Red Valley Media Group. EasyWay.tv. And the Women's Federation for World Peace at WFWP.us.